Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to kind of answer the question whether you should start a blog post, YouTube channel, or podcast in 2019. If you want to start an internet business of any kind, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's fitness, whether it's you know making money online, maybe it has to do with marketing, maybe it has to do with gaming, whatever it is, you can start a business with any of those three, but those are kind of what it comes down to. Usually people have a huge traffic source from either a podcast, YouTube channel, or blog that kind of feeds their business. So first of all, you, you need to know how many of them are out there and how much your competition factors in. So as far as websites, there are about 1.6 million or 1.5 million websites in the entire world, and about 500 million of those are blogs. So a lot of people throw out how many websites there are like a, a million and a half or a billion and a half websites or so and most of those are not blogs a lot of those are small business websites that don't really get updated that often and just kind of are a place for people to find inventory or to make a purchase and that's it and as far as blog posts those are the ones you're going to be competing against the ones that are publishing blog posts and that is about 500 million right now or so in the past year or two according to sites like media kicks and some of these other ones now there's about 440 million back in 2017 on this post between tumblr square squarespace wordpress and some of the other ones out there those three are some of the most popular platforms but now two years later it's closer to about 500 million according to hostingtribunal.com, 1.6 million, 1.6 billion websites and about 500 million are recognized as blogs. And about 2 million blog posts are published daily. That's a lot of competition. You'll notice that blogs um, are just really kind of hard to start right now, especially if that's your sole form of traffic. Then you get to YouTube channels. So according to Tubix and Social Blade, then you have about as of 2018 or so about 23 million youtube channels so that's significantly less than the 500 million blogs that are out there of course and obviously you're only going to compete against a fraction of those depending on the industry you're specializing in depending on the niche you're targeting but still as far as competition youtube of course is not a new website anymore being around for 10 or 15 years now, but they still, while having quite a bit of competition, they're still nowhere close to blogs yet. So 23 million or so YouTube channels. And then when you get to podcasts, according to a couple of different uh, pretty credible sources, you have around 500,000, 550,000 podcasts, 700,000. It just kind of depends on who you ask. But um, as far as that, about five to seven hundred thousand plus podcasts and uh, most of these are talking about itunes but as far as podcasting goes there are multiple platforms that you can have a podcast on you also have stitcher you have himalaya is a new one you have a lot of different podcast platforms but pretty much all of them are posting on itunes because that's kind of where it started and it's still one of the most popular so you can go through a few of these i'll have links to these in the show notes um, as far as where podcasting is the most popular, you'll notice that uh, South Korea is extremely popular for podcasts. Then you have Spain, Sweden, Australia, and then you have United States at, you know, 33% of people have listened to a podcast in the past month or so back in 2018 is when they did this study. So then you can kind of go down the list, but those are some of the most popular countries for podcasts right now. And it's only going to keep growing. So really, as far as the popularity rising plus the least amount of competition, you're probably better off starting a podcast for whatever it is that you're trying to make a business for. Um, as far as where to upload a podcast, obviously, it's pretty pretty well known. It's pretty much public information where to where to start a website. You can start one at a lot of different places for a blog. WordPress is what I recommend. That's what I use. You can go to my website and uh, just click start a blog right there and I'll show you kind of how to set a WordPress blog up there. 
it'll be like four dollars a month or something really cheap but wordpress gives you a lot of options a lot of comp uh customization and uh it's very professional of course always updating um and then you have i you know you have like itunes connect.apple.com is where you can kind of go to set up your id for your podcast there's also a going to be a link in the show notes that I have for you where you can go to this blog post here at transistor.fm. They'll show you kind of how to um, set it up as far as creating a new Apple ID for podcasting only and then uh, hooking that up with iTunes. And then you have Stitcher, which is for podcasts. You have Himalaya.com, which is for podcasts. And just you want to sign up as a creator or content provider on those. But what I recommend you do is you create a podcast or a YouTube channel. That should probably be your main one that you get most of your traffic from right now. Like I use YouTube for most of my traffic right now, but I am looking into getting into podcasting and um, some ideas for that. But you can look at podcasts and you can even look at my YouTube channel to get ideas of how to use a blog. You still want to have a blog no matter what you do because your website is kind of the the media platform that you own yourself and that can't really be taken away from you unless you do something just super crazy. But uh, YouTube's algorithms always changing. These other podcasts algorithms are always going to be changing and you don't own those platforms. You don't own iTunes. You don't own Stitcher. You don't own YouTube, but you do own your own website slash blog. So what I recommend is you use YouTube channels or podcasts, especially and then you have show notes pages or blog posts that correspond. So richroll.com, you'll notice that they do podcast notes. If you if you click on an episode, uh, Rich Roll has a pretty popular uh, podcast on just health, wellness, and stuff like that, going vegan, whatever. Um, so they have like you know their show notes here, their links, what they talk about in the episode, and you can listen to it directly on the blog as well as Stitcher and iTunes and all of those. Tim Ferriss is another one that's very popular. If you click on any of these uh, latest posts, usually they are some sort of uh, notes for a podcast. You'll notice you can listen to it. You can sign up on Spotify, Apple, Overcast, and these other platforms. He even posts a YouTube video if he did the interview live. So another way to repurpose it is to make a YouTube video out of it. Now I showed you um, some ways that you can do that with a podcast. Now, if you go to my website, selfmadesuccess.com, you'll notice that I typically like to use uh, video notes instead of podcast notes because I do it in video form. So I'll embed the video at the top here, and then I'll have the links and more information below the video as the notes. So that's another thing you can do. If you want to go more for the video route, you can do the same thing that podcasters do with your blog. And then if you have an i if you have a podcast, you can post it to a YouTube channel without really needing to make a visual, um, like Tim Ferriss does. So he'll, you'll notice that him on YouTube. If you go to Tim Ferriss on YouTube, he posts his episodes. Um, if he has a live interview, he'll post that as a video. But if he uh, just recorded it on, you know whatever platform he recorded it then he'll just have a picture of the art for the podcast and a picture of the person he interviews so literally you just click on that you don't really watch anything you just listen to it on youtube instead of on itunes or something else then you have joe rogan who likes to um do this where he uh interviews everybody live and so you can actually watch it live as they're talking and then uh, you can listen to it when it's posted on the podcast as well. But you'll notice that as far as trends go, now I know this isn't always an accurate representation of an industry like blogging, but if you look at blog um, versus YouTube versus podcast, blogging is kind of losing a little traction as far as the trends in Google search over the past 15 years or so. Uh, it kind of peaked around 2009. Then you have podcasting, which is on the rise still. Now, this, of course, is in the United States. You want to check this for the country that you are going to be uh, focusing on. But in the United States, you have podcasting still on the rise here. Interest over time is still rising right now in 2019 or so. 
And then YouTube is kind of declining a little bit, but still very popular. And uh, the peak was around, you know, 2013, 2014. But, um, you know, YouTube is still extremely popular and the second largest search engine in the world. So last but not least, one more tip. I recommend that you reserve the username for the podcast or the YouTube channel or whatever. Get the domain name dot com. That's the best one. And then get, you know, the, just type in whatever dot com or just type in the username here and click search and reserve the same exact username on as many of the social media accounts as possible. It'll just make it much easier for people to find you and it'll make it easier for you to repurpose your content and to build more traffic and a better business because you don't want to rely completely on any one particular um, traffic source although most of your traffic will probably come from either the blog youtube channel or podcast that you focus on so um, like mine is at mr justin bryant you can find that and like four or five different social media accounts it's the same exact username so you want to reserve as much of this stuff as possible when you come up with a name and you can go to namecheck.com that's name chk.com check the uh, show notes for the link to this page and that'll help you reserve all this stuff and it'll tell you kind of what what is taken and what isn't on these different platforms. So other than that, I hope this was helpful for you in making your decision or just researching this topic. Um, and hopefully you can find even more value at the show notes page or in that playlist that's coming up in the top right of your screen for other ways of looking at making money online. And then I will see you in the next video.